again, friends. I have a project that I need to work on today because tomorrow night is the first frost of the season. And I'm fairly prepared, but <laughs> there is something that I need to do to save the fall plants that I've put out. Normally, the first frost of the season would be something mild, something probably like mid 30s, but I have seen the forecast as low as 25. Uh, and even though these veggies that I put in here for fall are frost tolerant, they don't have an unlimited tolerance for cold temperatures. 25 would probably take out at least some of this stuff. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build some low tunnels. As with pretty much everything else this year, building a homestead, I have zero experience with building low tunnels. But I have done some research and I've gotten some tools to help me get the job done. So let me show you what the first step is. I picked up a whole bunch of half inch EMT conduit. It's just a hollow metal pole to bend it into these six foot wide hoops. And to bend the metal conduit, I got this six foot hoop bender from Johnny's Seats. You can do six foot hoops, you can do three foot hoops, four foot hoops. Um, they all generally use the same 10 foot length of conduit. So if you do three, if you have, you know, three foot rows, it'll be taller. I chose the six foot one because I decided that I want to change my bed widths to six inches. Um, the way we built it out in the spring, there were two and a half feet wide with a foot and a half uh, walkway in between them. Um, I decided that I wanted to do six foot beds because if I wanted to do these low tunnels, I didn't want to have to buy a hundred pieces of conduit. Um, people originally started using conduit because it used to be like two, three bucks and it's like three or four times as expensive now. So I didn't want to be paying crazy amounts of money for uh, material if I could accomplish the same thing with less material. So I am widening my beds. That also gives me more growing space. Um, so it just works out all around. I have only bent this one piece so far and that was with Antonio's help. Uh, he rigged up this setup for the hoop bender this morning <laughs> because we didn't really have anywhere to put it. Um, so it's a temporary setup. I don't recommend that you <laughs> copy our uh, janky setup, but if you are in a pinch like we were, you can try it out. The normal setup for this hoop bender is to have it attached to, um, I think a picnic table is what they usually recommend, or you can get um, an attachment that will hook up to a hitch on your car. Those are the two most frequently used things, but this is what we have and this is what I'm gonna work with. So, to bend one of these into what you need it to be. It's pretty simple. Um, you stick one end into the hoop bender, bend it, and then you just keep working your way through until the whole thing is bent. If you have a three or four foot version, um, there is a portion on the end that'll be straight, but because I have the six foot version, the entire length of the conduit is gonna bend. So let's do it. So it's not perfectly the same as the last one, but they don't have to be exactly identical. They just have to be more or less the same shape so that you can set this in the ground over your row and then put the plastic on top. So I'm pretty happy with that. Now I gotta bend a whole bunch more.
I still do have lots of conduit left, but I have bent eight of these hoops, which should be enough to get me started on one row. So I'm gonna try putting these in for the first row and see what happens. See if I need to make any adjustments before I bend all of these guys. To put these hoops in, I'm gonna start at the very end and I'm going to place them every five feet. With the half inch conduit, you really should do every five feet. Um, you can probably stretch it to six in the middle if you have to, but it's especially important that it's stronger on the ends. Um, some people will also recommend that you use three quarters inch conduit on the ends. I went with half inch. I can pick up some three quarters inch conduit if I need to, but I'm gonna roll with this for now. So let's start at the end. I did have to take the shovel and loosen the dirt around uh, where it needed to be driven in on both ends because the soil in here is insanely compacted, especially um, on the northern side of the garden. This used to be um, a sacrifice paddock for a, hor or a horse or horses, so it's just been compacted over decades really. Um, and so our soil is very unforgiving in that aspect and because it's right on the edge of the row and the walkway um, these are probably going to be a little difficult to get in. That is okay. I can take the shovel. I can loosen it. Um, I just don't think I'm going to be able to get the full recommended 10 inches driven into the ground. Um, we'll see if that becomes an issue. I'm sure if there were snowpack on on top of the uh, greenhouse plastic, that will be an issue. But all I'm trying to do for right now, today and maybe tomorrow, is just get this set up so that the freeze, the super low temperatures that are coming our way for the next few days, don't kill these off. I can perfect the system later. It doesn't have to be completely right, right now. So I'm gonna work on getting the rest of these in. I think that looks pretty good. It was difficult to get them in there and it was difficult to get it uh, perfectly lined up, you know, exactly six feet. This row is more or less six feet wide, but it's not perfectly straight. Um, so there's a little bit of trial and error there, but it's actually easier than I thought it would be to push these in. We'll just have to see how strong these are with how deep I was able to drive them into the ground. Um, I guess the first snow will be the test. Now, I just have to go bend more conduit and do the next row.
I think for absolutely never having done that before, that went pretty well. Uh, the next part might be tricky though. The next part is putting the greenhouse plastic on. And it sounds easy, but you have to make sure to leave enough on the ends to sort of twist it up and close it. And so I'm a little nervous to make these cuts in this very expensive piece of plastic and make it a little bit too short and essentially unusable. So I'm gonna go grab what we have in the shed. I'm gonna roll it out and see what I think makes sense. I did a quick Google search and after I found the right magical terms to look up, um, whatever website I found recommended leaving between four and eight feet on either end. So a total of either eight, you know, anywhere between eight and 16. Um, I have a hundred foot roll and I have a 35 foot row and a 37 foot row. So just because I don't want to be left with a pretty useless, you know, 10 foot piece of plastic. I'm just gonna cut it so that I can use the entire roll. So that's one 49 foot length and one 51 foot length, which means there's seven feet on either end. I hope that makes sense if you're trying to follow along. And if you don't care about lengths, then whatever. Uh, but essentially I'm leaving seven feet on both ends and cutting it so that so that I use this entire roll um, and I don't, I don't have any scrap plastic left over. This is certainly a measure twice, cut once situation. So I've measured from the far end and I've measured from the other far end and made extra sure that these measurements are correct. And it looks like they gave me an extra foot or two on the end of the roll. So that's nice. Even if I do mess up a little bit, it gives me a little room for error. And now I just have to commit to cutting it. I think that looks pretty good. I could make the ground contact a little tighter with more rocks or bags of sand. Um, and I could add clips, I think I will eventually add clips 
to the hoops themselves to help the whole structure withstand um, you know any weight that's on top of it like snow a little bit better but for the purpose I need it for the next couple days this is pretty perfect <laughs> in my book at least and now I'm going to undo all of my very hard work Tonight we're supposed to get some rain, and tomorrow during the day is actually supposed to be really nice. So, two things. I want to let these plants get that rainwater, and I don't want to steam them during the day tomorrow either. Um, one thing about greenhouse plastic is you have to be really careful because even though it comes in really handy for situations like really low temperatures, it still increases the temperature by 10, 15, whatever degrees um, during the day. And these are, you know, broccoli, kale, bok choy. They don't like to be hot. They don't do well when they're hot. So I don't want to kill them by making them too hot when I'm trying to save them from being too cold. So I'm actually going to take all this greenhouse plastic off for today and put it back on tomorrow afternoon. And since I have the hoops in, in the plastic cut, and the um, rocks right next to it, it should be pretty much as easy as just pulling this over, setting the rocks. Should take maybe half an hour. So I'm good with that, <laughs> and I am so hoping this works. And for those of you who are curious what I have in here, because I know you are, let me give you a little bit of a tour. I still have some warm weather stuff in here. There's, you know, some cosmos, zinnias, a little bit of flowers, and uh, some okra, but I will cut those down tomorrow so that they don't interfere with the greenhouse plastic. We have a row of Romanesco. We've got some regular cauliflower and purple cauliflower. I have a whole bunch of purple cabbage. I also have a few different varieties of bok choy. There's this nice light green one. There's this darker purple one. And then there's a darker green one. I also have some broccolini at the end of this row, and I tucked a few garlic cloves in here as well. And then a couple of varieties of, of regular heading broccoli, and some Napa cabbage, which is starting to look really beautiful. I also have a whole patch over here of both hard neck and soft neck garlic. Uh, it's kind of intermixed. <laughs> I've thought that I had planted all the hard neck in the back and then moved to the soft neck, but the bag with the hard neck garlic had broken open, so I kept finding random pieces, so they're all intermixed in here. This garlic does not need to be covered for the winter. Um, I planted this about a month before our anticipated last frost date so that it could get a little bit established, send these up, and it's natural for garlic to be exposed in the winter. It should be totally fine. And I'm doing my best to get all of these um, fall and winter veggies mulched with the leaves that are falling now. Um, super handy, it's free, it's in the garden anyway. I kind of want to clean it up um, like in the, in the back over there. And so it's great, I just throw it on the rows. Uh, so I would really like to get the rest of this row right here. Mulch with leaves before the cold weather comes in because it's just gonna be an added layer of protection and if I don't make myself do it now, <laughs> it's gonna get to springtime and I'm gonna say, oh shoot, I never got to it. So I'm gonna do my best. I would really like to do another row, um, another six foot row, I don't know, about 40 feet long with some lettuce, kale, spinach, carrots, stuff like that. Um, and I thought that I had more greenhouse plastic than I do. I thought I had enough for three rows, but that's okay because I'm about to place a different order with Johnny's. So I will contemplate adding another 50 feet or so of that greenhouse plastic to that order. We'll see. As for the state of the rest of the garden, pretty much everything is toast anyway. Um, <laughs> there's a few zinnias in here that are still doing things. Um, I think the cucamelons are still going pretty strong, but most stuff kind of gave up a little, a little while ago. It has been getting colder. Um, I did plant some sweet peas, but the deer have been eating those. Yay. <laughs> 
Uh, and the loofahs are just now blooming, which makes zero sense, but they definitely won't set anything. Um, but yeah, after, after this cold weather comes through, whatever's left in here that hasn't started to die off will be toast for sure. All right, it's starting to get dark and I need to go make myself some dinner. Thank you all for keeping me company today and I'll see you next time.